hello, I'm in my car. I drive now. That's a thing that happened. Quick update on that. I passed my test when I was 17, 13 years ago, and hadn't driven since. So I took some refresher lessons and got myself a car because it was high time because days like today often crop up and it's easier to drive than it is to get any other kind of transport that would take twice as long. So today I am headed to Wellin Garden City, which is where a um, studio is, where my set for my tour has been built. And today I'm there with everyone, with the band, with the creative team. I think the producers are there, Jamie and Eliza. I think they're there. And basically we try out the show. Obviously we've tried it out in a rehearsal room, but we've never had um, full band and me and set and everything. So today is essentially a tech day before we head to Bradford on Wednesday. I'm getting nerves like just talking about this. I'm also quite nervous about driving because this is the first time I will have been on the motorway on my own. But you know, it's like 11 o'clock on a Monday. So I'm hoping the roads will be quite quiet. Fingers crossed. But yeah, I mean, exciting day, nerve wracking day. I've got a suitcase in my boot filled with potential like costumes. I don't know if today's the day that, I mean, I'm choosing my own costume, but I'm the sort of person who likes authority and likes someone telling me yes or no. <laughs> I'm used to having like no choice in what I wear and what I sing and what I do. So this has all been very new because I have full choice in what I sing and what I wear and what I do, but I still like to have opinions from the people that I trust. So I'm gonna show it to my director, Ruthie, and my MD, Ben. And whoever else is there, maybe Jamie and Eliza if they're there. So, I'm gonna stop rambling and put off driving because that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm putting off driving in my car. So, let's do this. Wish me luck for the drive, not even for the rest of the day. I just need luck for the drive. Very nice, isn't it? Oh, it's the fascinating Aida. Hey! There she is. Cool! We arrived in Bradford! This is my little dressing room, and I've got flowers already. So I'm gonna open these, see who they're from. Where can I put you? I love that I've got a little lemon and some honey. I think my agent might have put that in like a rider or like something just asked if I could have like honey and lemon just for my throat before every show which was a very good call well done Helen and Alistair let's see who my fans are from whilst I'm opening these we had such a good drive down I'm driving in a car I'm not driving um Harry Pickett my tour manager um is driving us and we we realized that we are near the same age so we have all the same taste in music and we were like my god grandmas are so good oh my god the feeling the script like so we ended up just listening to all of these great bands and being transported back to like 2000s <laughs> it was great oh, beautiful flowers here we go these are from These are from Evolution, who ran the panto that I did last year. We hope you have the most fabulous opening night and a brilliant run, sending you lots of love from the Evolution offices. That is so, so sweet. They are not the people that I expected to get flowers from. Not that I expected to get flowers at all, but if I was gonna get flowers, I didn't expect it to be from panto. So thank you so much. Hello everyone. Today was very much a day of settling in and teching the show. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, teching is uh, what happens when you make sure all of the lighting, this looks like I've got really high shoulders, it's not my shoulders down here. Um, so teching a show is when you make sure all of your sound, lighting, and any automation, we've got no automation, but any of your technical stuff is all working properly. 
um, and usually you do this by going through all of your numbers. Um, so we texted as much as we could and then we ran it this evening, which went really well. We didn't tech the opening and the uh, finale, so, but then we ran it anyway with those numbers in it and it all went very smoothly. So we're gonna tech the opening and the ending tomorrow before our first show, before opening night. But I'm in my hotel room now, which I will show you. Bathrooms, bathrooms like sort of up some steps there. It's very strange. Um, a very nice very nice little hotel room in Bradford um, we've got the most amazing catering team they are incredible dinner was absolutely sublime and then they made me a little sandwich for after the run a little chicken mayo bap so they're the best and they're the nicest people as well Mick and Neil I'm not needed until sort of around one-ish tomorrow but I'll probably get up have breakfast and then just go to the theatre the theatre is literally next door but the good thing is that i'm really happy and i was really worried i had a tough day on monday after we had a little like small run through in a different little studio it was great it was great but we just didn't have the facilities to do everything the way that we would be doing it on stage so i just started to get anxious that i wouldn't have enough time so I'm really pleased that today went well. I think tomorrow I'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. But now I'm like, so I'm gonna go to bed. And I'll see you tomorrow for our first night. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See you tomorrow. Good morning. Today is the day. Today is the day. <clears throat> I've got Barocca fizzing in the background. I've had a cup of tea. I'm gonna head to the theatre and see if catering's got any like bananas or something I can have. I've got my little theatre just in case kit. It's got plasters, fisherman's friends, an extra pair of earrings just in case I lose mine, rescue remedy, mouthwash, deodorant, ibuprofen and paracetamol, extra hairbands, the lot. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling okay. I'm feeling all right. My voice feels a little bit tired from the run through yesterday, but it is, I, you know, I've not spoken to anyone this morning yet and I've not warmed up, so it'll be fine. It will be absolutely fine. I feel like I look slightly like Brian May this morning with my hair like this. <clears throat> all the feelings, all the feelings. I also got given one of these yesterday, the Open Book Tour hoodie, which has all of the dates on the back and it's all glittery. I don't think it shows up on camera, but that's glitter. It's all gold glitter. So good, and I got one so big that I can essentially wear it as a dress. But these will be on sale, front of house, along with pin badges, water bottles, mugs, uh, t-shirts, and hoodies. These also come in black, as well as green, but I like the green. So here we are. This is my dressing room. If you go up there and right, it's literally stage left. I'm straight onto stage. Um, but I've already managed to make myself very at home in this dressing room. That's my little costume case. Here are some of the assortments of dresses that I will be wearing. Um, I wore that one for the run yesterday, but I think I'm gonna wear this one for the opening night. It's essentially the same, just with different sleeves and different colored moons and stars. There's this one that I like a lot as well um, and then a simple green simple green one and then this black one with the stars on the sleeves I mean they might change as time goes on I'll probably add a few more into the mix this also made me laugh now for those of you that don't know what a rider is um, usually like big stars and it's usually never really in theatre unless I don't I don't think it's in theatre but usually if like I don't know Lady Gaga was going to a venue it would be in her rider that her dressing room always had water in it, always had a bottle of wine, always had X, Y, and Z. Um, so that every venue you go to, you always have the same things in your dressing room. Um, and some people just go for the necessities, like they just need to know the Wi-Fi password, there has to be a fridge in their room to keep their water cool, there has to be water. Um, and other people go to like, the nth degree where they're like, I must only have blue M&Ms in a bowl that is the colour of the sky. Like, crazy stuff like that. I 
don't care enough. <laughs> I'm like, if I want something, I'll sort it myself. It's totally fine. So I never have a rider. Um, but when I walked in yesterday, there was just this. There was a lemon on a cutting board with a knife. I was like, that feels we weirdly specific. So I texted my agent and was like, did you say that my dressing room always has to have like lemon and, and honey and like tea? There's like a little box of tea here. That looks like it's here all the time. But the lemon and the cutting board, I feel like is a new addition. And she was like, well, you never have a rider. So I just have to make one up for you. So she's asked that every dressing room uh, I have on tour has um, a lemon for tea because one thing I like before I go on stage is to have honey, lemon and ginger in hot water. So, I've just got a lemon and a knife and a cutting board, which I, I kind of love. I kind of love it. It feels, it feels like not enough of an ask that I'm being deaverish, but a weird enough request that it feels on brand. <laughs> also, this is a thing I decided last minute. This ominous brown envelope that sat here. I have been making earrings for a little while, um, just because I wanted to make my own earrings, but then if you buy a big block of clay, you can get like loads of pairs of earrings out of it, but I don't need loads of pairs of earrings. So I started making them and selling them on Etsy, um, but I had eight pairs, nine pairs, eight pairs left over, and I will make some more on the tour, but I'm gonna hide a pair in every venue for someone to find. Um, they're all bookish themed, some are like spell books, some are like little stacks of like wonky books. Um, but yeah, so if you see one of these floating around the theatre, it's a pair of earrings as a gift from me to you, but there's only one per venue, so. And I won't tell you where, I, where I've hidden it. Maybe I'll post like a little cryptic, cryptic picture. I don't know, but I'm gonna go find time to hide this. I'm excited. Trinity is singing. I'm about to walk on stage. These are the books that I start my show with. <sighs> I'm feeling okay. I feel like the meet and greet was really good for me to meet people and to go, oh, actually, they're really kind and really supportive. And everyone in this audience is just sort of excited to like celebrate musical theater with me. So I just need to keep my emotions in check because I've been like on the verge of tears all day. So. But it's all good, I am in control. I am in control. I am an authoritative human who can't catch her breath. Let's go. Good morning. <clears throat> it's the day after the first show. I didn't sleep very well last night because I think I was just so filled with energy from the show. I also think I'm very used to like going home and debriefing with Joel and Scott who's like been living with me for the last few months because he's been in Bake Off. Obviously I FaceTime Joel, but it's just not quite the same. It's just not quite the same as talking to someone in real life. So I felt like I had loads that I wanted to like sort of say and unpack and, and also I was just tired. I was like, I just need to go to bed because I've got another one. I've got another one tonight in Oxford. See, so yeah, I just felt like I was so full of energy that I didn't really get to uh, expel that before I went to sleep and it was it was it was such a good night and it was such a good show after the first act I was like ah oh, this is why I shouldn't have been nervous because that was great we had a slight technical hitch with act two in that my in-ears didn't work um I'll show you them later I've got these little in-ears um which are little like speakers they're sort of like headphones but they give me a feed of the band and a feed of my own mic so that I don't have to push my voice as hard when I'm singing because I can hear myself really well. I don't have to struggle to hear it from like the speakers that you're getting. So they didn't work for the second act, which I found tough. Um, so I don't think I've got the like elation of doing a show, of doing my first show, um, because something did go slightly awry. But aside from that, it was great. It was really good. And I've got someone coming to watch tonight 
for the first time. My friend Emma Kingston's coming to watch in Oxford. So, um, yeah. I've got 15 minutes before I go have to meet my director downstairs for breakfast. And then we drive to Oxford at nine o'clock. Snooze in the car on the way out here. So we're now in Oxford. This is the Wall of Fame. There's a brickage of base there. Uh, there is Richard E. Grant. I love Richard E. Grant so much. Ian McKellen, John Bishop. So cool. Very, very cool. But we're going to head to stage for soundtrack. Southampton. I've not filmed much because my family came from the Isle of Wight to here to watch the night. It was the first time my parents watched it, it was the first time Joel watched it, my friend Matt came. I just had a lot of people in so I was very nervous but I've just got back to my hotel room and oh holy smoking succulents on a bike. Yes? A Rose Royce and a Coke Zero. I'm gonna show you this hotel room. So you come in here, and here is the small bathroom. And I say small bathroom because this is the big bathroom. <laughs> what? Like, what? Isn't her sinks? Unbelievable. Then you come through here. Uh, it's like an apartment. Oh, I love this song. I was not in charge of booking accommodation on this tour, but whoever was, I love you. Because this is the best hotel room I've ever stayed in, and I am so hungry. I started, my stomach started rumbling during Teenage Obsession tonight. And I've got food, and I've got a cocktail on its way. Hi, my name's Carrie Hope Fletcher, and I am terrible at vlogging. <laughs> I think being on the road and mixing in nerves and mixing in just constantly having to like pack up bags and travel and stuff means that I'm not very good at picking up my camera. Especially in this vlog, because the first four venues I was still finding my feet, I had lots of family come to watch, um, so I promise from now on I will be so much better. I'm currently in Clandidno and I've been better at vlogging here because I think things are starting to sort of calm down, I'm starting to find my feet. Um, and I'm understanding the routine of things a little bit more. So this first tour vlog was very much like a little scrapbook and I hope that's okay. Um, but there will be much more in the next 12 venues. 12 venues? 12 venues. Thank you so much to everyone who's come to the tour so far. Thank you so much to everyone who's about to come to the tour. Um, I've been having such a good time. Not just on stage, but meeting people as well. So on to the next venue. And the vlogs will be better. I hope. Bye.